Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 558 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined, as always, by the number one Green Bay Packers fan and owner, Stephen Kyle Brackey. They're 4-0. And by the number one, I don't know, I don't know, he's number one in many things, but he's Ben Funky Askren. What, is, what aren't you number one in, Ben? Um, I don't know. Uh, my internet connection's decent this morning, so I don't have the number one internet connection. How about that? Goosebumps. Yeah, not number one in the internet this morning. Ben, where are you? What are you doing? I'm in Florida. Uh, did I if you want to talk to someone down here talk, talking to him? I was in yesterday. It's me today. And it's been, man, it's been fascinating, like, seeing and watching the process. I it's pretty cool today. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work, buddy. It's really, it's really choppy and cutting in and out. But if you, if you didn't glean what he said, uh, Ben is at the WWE right now. Um, I don't know. Who knows what they're talking about, but exciting stuff. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. It's just like when you were talking in sentences, it was really choppy, very Uh-oh. bad. So we'll, well see how it goes. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, Here we'll we give go. it a shot. Um, one last shot, I think. Is that the name of the? One more one shot. More shot. One more shot. One more shot. I've been merging the last dance and one last shot uh, together since that documentary came out, and I can. You never probably haven't more watched shot. one more shots, have you? I haven't. No. Can't believe you. I know it's really disappointing. Uh, one day, uh, it'll happen. Okay, so let's talk. Who's number one? Ben, you are here. Why don't you give your your overall thoughts, and we can get a little more specific. Yeah, overall thoughts was it was fantastic. I missed high school wrestling a lot. Um, man, I'm excited to talk about some of the matches because, you know, I was on, like, the post-match call with Mike, and you only have, like, a minute to, to talk happened, and obviously hard to talk about the full scope of the match in a minute, so I'm excited to talk about all of them today. Yes, uh, I hope that we do get to do that. Um, so... For for me, it was from a just a wrestling standpoint as eh, the most exciting who's number one I can remember. I don't know if it's the best one ever, but for calling the matches, for how many amazing ones we had, it it, it was up there for me. Uh, so one that was my biggest takeaway, and that was really a question coming in because for so many of these athletes, they were not in the midst of of normal competition they're not in the midst of normal Mm -hmm. training so what were we gonna get i mean were we gonna get you know i'll I'll be honest i was sort of freaking out when we had kind of (laughs) back-to-back injuries i was like back to back it was like four in a row well we had the i don't remember that peterson took a break Uh, um so hattendorf uh am i forgetting one that's three I named three in a row. I think I've you said four one. in a row, and I remember two in a row. The uh, three. I got the three. Hattendorf and, and uh, Pinto. So, yeah, I was and, sort of – And Jordan Peterson hurt himself kicking uh, – Jordan Peterson. Uh, <laughs> Dean Peterson. Dean Peterson hurt himself kicking. Remember there was that sequence? Yeah. Um, and, oh, and Jordan Titus called an injury timeout. So that is four. That's right. But you said in a row. I don't think it was in Those a row. Those matches were in a row. Oh, they? my gosh. Yeah, Dean and – yeah, okay. So I so as that's happening, I'm like, uh, I'm like, geez, did, did – you kind of get paranoid. You're like, did we do something? Is there something with the magic? But nothing like that. But fortunately, after the that bad streak, uh, everything was, was right in the world, and we had some, some good wrestling. Of course, unfortunate injury for Master Giovanni. But other than that, amazing wrestling, high-level stuff, very exciting matches. Um Hey, is Mastro okay, Christian? I haven't I haven't heard an update there. Okay. Um, Got it. We'll, we'll try to have one for everyone tomorrow, if at all possible. Okay, cool. so why don't we why don't we start with I don't want to go like through every single match and kind of re, redo them, but one question I had been: Who do you think was the most outstanding wrestler of of who's number one? Yeah. I- I got to say at the end of the show, and for me, impressed by Nixon. I know hey, he was. I didn't, I didn't hear who you, what you said. You cut out. Damn it. Nick Feldman. Okay, yeah. He looked t- totally fantastic. Um, maybe he was taking shots. 
and uh, kind of you know capitalizing on those. But just man, he he looked outstanding to me. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I didn't expect that because I picked Haas to win. And but a, a major, I mean, bonus points at mm-hmm. number one are are pretty um, pretty rare and unprecedented. Yeah. So for him to get it on basically straight takedowns and the efficiency of his attacks and finishing was really tremendous. So yeah, I I agree with and, that. And he scored right leg attacks. He scored body with under. Um, hey, I, he ben, I don't think it's gonna work today. Food. It's no good. Can I call in or something? I don't know. Why don't you uh, hop off? And if you and Travis uh, or Tyler, excuse okay. me, wanna wanna figure something out, we'll do that. But it's me and Bracky for for the time uh. being. Sorry, Ben. Number not number one in internet, Ben Askren. Okay, so no Ben for the foreseeable future. Perhaps he will. Call in and that would be great. Yeah. But if not, all right, Bracky. Hope Let's you, do it. Hope we got your your podcast and shoes on. Today. I'm ready. All right. Who who is your O W? Uh, Feldman probably was until oh Drake Ayala stepped on the mat. Um, when you, I I mean all of us I don't think hesitated one bit when we picked Richie <clears throat> Richie Figueroa on uh, Thursday show, and then even with um our pick'em contest he was. Uh, the wrestler that the most people picked. Um, and it was just, I don't know, we all knew Drake Ayala was very good. Yeah. We just felt like Richie Figueroa was on another level. And, I mean, I think Ayala was literally the better wrestler the entire match. Um, and anytime you take out the, the number one pound-for-pound pound, uh, wrestler in your class, um, I think I think it's got to go to him. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, I think it is Drake Ayala for some of the reasons you said, and you know when when we're putting the when they put the card together, I'm not going to act like I did. You know, you, you wonder about a, a match where you know they're probably not going to be at the same high school weight, and is is Drake really someone that that can challenge? And yeah, absolutely, we learned that he was on the level of of Richie Figueroa, and you also learn like so. There's been some level of wrestling f- during this COVID time, and. There have been some weird losses. Kyle Haas took a weird loss. Um, Drake, Ayala took losses. Drake, Drake took a couple losses. So you're like, oh, gosh, is this just going to be terrible? Because he lost to guys that were – one guy that I don't even think was ranked over the summer. Correct. And so you're like, all right, is he going to come in? But he came in so prepared, such a good – and you could tell he had a very Figueroa-specific game mm-hmm. plan. He, he wrestled primarily – not primarily, but a lot of time on the knee, which I had never seen him do before. And – Figueroa just seemed like he didn't have – he was not prepared for that, like he'd never seen that, and he didn't know what to do to make the adjustments, right? And, of course, we, you and I, both said, do not go under Drake Ayala. Yeah. He goes under, no hesitation, was out immediately, no questions asked. He mentioned that in his post Yeah, post-match he interview. said he was out in five seconds. Um, that <laughs> yeah. was a great interview, by the way. He quoted Metcalf. Um, he said that, right, uh, right, right. yeah, he was reinforcing uh, what they already believed. He had a great pace and a good sweep single, and they still couldn't stop it. And uh, he said that Richie was really good on top, and it was a challenge. And uh, he went under him and got out in five seconds. And I told you, someone from his camp said they were going to get out, and they got out very quickly. He got out right away. No problem at all. And then, you know, for, for that match to go to overtime, it was it was the the singlet grab or the um, mm-hmm. jersey grab that that forced that, but really it was two t- two takedowns to none there, yep. right? Which is really really impressive. And you know Figueroa, uh, I, I remain you know thinking he's gonna be really really good at the next level, but there um, clearly he, he's not the pound for pound number one guy. I think he could retain that status. I think he could go down as the best recruit of this class, but. Bottom line, he he lost, but credit him for putting it on the line to take on someone who was bigger than him. Yep. Um, and I was I was pretty, uh, I was very impressed with with Ayala. So I think there were like probably three really strong candidates for for the OW: Drake over Figueroa, Feldman's dominant performance over Kyle Haas, and Jesse Mendez. Uh, running running the two match gauntlet mm-hmm. over Jordan Williams, and then how he ran down Vandeveer was so impressive. He had to get three takedowns in the third period in overtime 
to win that match, and, and he went and got it. And for me, Van de Veer, I thought, looked looked really, really good. It seemed like he was so close to getting that reversal at the end of at the end of the second. I couldn't believe it um, that he didn't actually. And for Mendez to be able to hold on that last little bit and get to overtime, and to to win a match where you know you wonder, can you really rely on pace to to win matches at this high, high level? And it was clearly had a huge impact for for Jesse. It uh. It kind of reminded me of uh, what Brayton Lee did a few times last year. He, you know, he chooses neutral instead of going underneath where he could probably get a free point. Um, now, Vanderveer had just ridden him out the entire first period, um, but he goes neutral and just goes after it like Brayton Lee did a few times last year and scores a couple takedowns. And to your point, it looked like he was gonna maybe at least give up as an escape. We got a little too high there with with legs in, and then he's able to get his hips back on top and, and force overtime. And then when, once it went to overtime, I I thought Mendez yeah. was going to win You for knew sure. it. Yeah. It's like the way it was training. If he can get to overtime, yeah. he's going to have all the momentum uh, in the world. Who are some of your more uh, impressive performances in, in defeat? Some guys you're like, ah, that, that guy's still really, really good. Uh, well, I – Jordan Williams, uh, mm-hmm. speaking with uh, Jesse Mendez, you know, it, he was in that match and it kind of, he was coming at the end too and it, it felt like he was going to do the classic uh, Jordan Williams pulling out at the end. Uh, he almost had the duck once and, and made the really exciting match there. Um, Jordan Titus looked awesome. Uh, that blast double he hit and oh just like gosh. the scrambling and opportunities he can create for himself is is pretty unreal and something that not everyone can do. Yeah, normally the elite scramblers are not the the super dynamic blow through you guys, right? right? But he hit like a, as close to a Jordan Burroughs double as you can right through him. I tell you what, him and Vandeveer hit two of the cleanest yes. double legs. I mean, I knew Vandeveer had the double, but the way he – hit it was there was a little extra juice in that yeah, one. There was. So I those were two for me that I'm like, yeah, they they lost, but Jordan Titus at the next level is gonna be fantastic. As is Joel Vandeveer. I think Northwestern got a really, really good one. He may have someone pointed this out on Twitter. He may have the uh Ryan Deacon hollow bone mm. situation. Because he looked like fifteen pounds bigger than Jesse Mendes. Apparently he's ob- obsessed with weight training. Love so it. and you can tell he looks massive. Then Patty Gallagher should do who's number one next year in like know, squats <laughs> or something. Those those two are absolute beasts. I, I was I was really impressed with uh, Jagger Condomini as well. Yes, I, I thought Voinovich was a pretty heavy favorite in that one, and uh, I mean, he that took a takedown in the last thirty seconds for for Voinovich to pull that out. So I was really impressed with Condomini. I think I would say the three biggest favorites coming in lost. I think Richard Figueroa, Keontae Hamilton, and Seth Shoemate, for, for me, and I felt like the general, the poll among the, the office crew, well, those were the three biggest favorites. To see all of them lose, um, obviously, was, was very surprising to me. And Chase Horn, I mean, he just he just w- went after it. I yeah. think the top wrestling was such a such mm-hmm. a big factor there. It, it was really impressive. I mean, he, he was a better guy the whole match. And, and like you said, you don't often see – really good top wrestling like that with heavyweights and he i mean he tilted him right? he did and almost had him a few other times as well um so <laughs> nc state just getting an absolute hammer oh there my gosh yeah they gotta be yeah he's gonna be training with Gwiz too mm-hmm. r- regularly so that's gonna be um that's gonna be crazy as well um, yo oh, guys oh it's been on the been on the phone can you hear me ben i'm back yeah, I've been watching you guys on Facebook. How are we doing? I, you're doing all right. Um, you know, got to it a little bit, and uh, I get to be back for the whole show. I, I was, you know, I was really sad. I was going to miss talking about this. Okay, so we just here to get you caught up. Well, you know what we're talking about. Who is who is your mo? Who is your OW? Uh, I think we talked about that. And who was? Um, you said you said Feldman. And who was, like, someone that, in defeat, you were still really impressed with? Um, there was a bunch of those matches where, 
you know, like the last ones, for example, Facundo and Valencia, I was impressed with both of them. I didn't think either one really came out poorly. Yeah, I well, with Kyle, I mean, th- that match, Facundo, Facundo won, and, and Valencia had that choice, but those two are so incredibly close in, in a way I'd, yeah. I didn't expect. I really thought it would be a, a close numerically match, but I figured Facundo would get the takedown. Kyle would struggle to generate the offense, and then he would just he would win. For it to come down to what what it did, Valencia really really impressed me. I I'm curious if we'll ever see them hit again because Valencia looks like a guy who's ready yeah. to get really big, right? I could see him being an 84, 97. He was tall. He's got those big shoulders. We've seen how Zahid grew, so we may never see that match again. But man, it was it was riveting. Yeah, I think that's the last time we'll see those guys. Uh, I agree with that. They're going to diverge in weight classes. The other one that I was really impressed with in defeat was Seth Shoemate. Like, I thought Tate Pippo in the win. I thought I thought Seth wrestled really well. I thought he had some good attacks, and Pippo was just really, really good. Yeah, I that we were talking about how the really the three biggest favorites probably lost in Figueroa. Shoemate and and Keontae Hamilton and Piccolo's mm-hmm. defense was really one of the main storylines coming out of who's number one just his flexibility and just one of those guys you just can't plant uh cleanly and I don't know if it was Shoemate's best performance or not he did vomit in the in the middle of the match so I don't know how, how <laughs> much true. of an impact that that had on it but I was I was surprised to see him lose and unable to finish he had a couple really good looks and just couldn't find a way to put him down yeah I, man pickle was super impressive i haven't seen him a whole bunch i'm excited to see him more move forward it was fun to watch wrestle um and yeah i guess i could see set shoemate getting over on him but i was really impressed with both those guys yeah i remain very very um bullish on Seth shoemate i'm curious for your thoughts on titus uh specifically but also that match just how your your assessment of the scrambling because i think that was the most scrambly and probably the most high level scrambling yeah. we saw but what was your impression of it uh well titus titus gas you know i don't know if that's because he hasn't wrestled a match in a long time or he didn't take it seriously enough or i you know i don't know why and so I don't know if it was because he was tired but he was definitely trying to over force the scrambles Right. He, he was trying to stuff them in there like a square peg in a round hole. How do you mean? Well, how did he force the scrambles? Um, I mean, just, just go through the match, watch it. It's like, oh, he just tried to scramble, scramble, scramble. No no baseline stuff. Um, very little offense. Uh, on bottom, everything's like a roll or a switch, you know? Yeah. I mean, and kind of that's what Keontae Hamilton did as a mistake also. He, his Keontae Hamilton's changeover was good. His knee five was good. And he kept trying to force the freaking Granby. I would have lost my mind if I was his coach. To be fair, well, I guess he did it enough that he did hit the Granby and then it got a one, then two off of it, did Keontae? Once it did. Once yes. out of like nine times. Yeah. You know who else can get caught in that Granby rut is Anthony Valencia. He will just Granby, Granby, Granby until yes. he gets away or just, I mean, does it. And Kyle. I was about to say, Kyle did it a few times there in the ride out. Yeah. Yes, he did twice. So, um, hey, go ahead. I think, well, I, so I, I actually was just, I was pontificating on this the other day to a bunch of my athletes, how it's, Graham is a great move. It absolutely is. But if you don't get out the first two times, man, you're probably not going to get out. And, and, and you need to have something else because something else will also make the Graham be better. Right? If they're predicting that you're doing something else and then you hit the Granby, it's going to be much more effective than if they're predicting that you're going to Granby. Yeah, I mean, p- partially the, the element of surprise on this uh, d- dynamic role like that is what's helpful. So if you know it's Absolutely. coming, if you know it's coming consistently, then it's, it's not the most complicated move to stop either. Yes, agreed. Okay, so I, I really I was very impressed with Titus even in in defeat. I was very impressed with Dean Peterson. I did not think Dean would be able to win because I thought the problems in that 
that Titus presented in the scrambles would still be there. And they were in a way, but Peterson figured it out. Um, okay, so we're kind of bouncing around like crazy, but it was a, it was a crazy card. <laughs> Lots of exciting stuff. Um, we talked about the Voinovich condomini match. Ooh, that was a good one. I Man, condomini is another one of the guys that really impressed me in defeat. I uh, Bracky mentioned it earlier. We kind of felt like Voinovich was a, was a bigger favorite here. Apparently these two... Um, do you have this story? They, they wrestled at like some combine thing or a practice, and apparently Voinovich just destroyed Condomini. Like, just took him down, really? took him down, took him down. Like, that Condomini, this was coming from Condomini's camp, and it was like basically um, Jagger is just one of those got a, a lights on type of dude that when, when it matters, he huh. can really elevate his performance. And he clearly he did here, and he was right there to win this match. Well, I mean, on the other side of that. And I was very impressed with the first two minutes and 20 seconds of Jagger Condomini, the scramble in the first period, the takedown, the ride out, the escape. I was really impressed with all that. But, man, when it came down to it, Bowinovich found a way to get it done. And so, you know, in a lights-on scenario, that goes to Bowinovich. I mean, he, he was down 3-0 going into the third period and yeah. freaking figured it out. Yes. Yeah, he did. And he, so he... He got two takedowns in the third, right? Am I remembering correctly? Yes. He got a takedown and takedown right out. He got the high crotch was his first takedown, I believe, and then he got the hit the yes. single leg that That's he couldn't cool. finish for his second takedown. That's uh that's that finish you like, Ben, right? The one he used to win it? Yeah, it's called it was called the answer. Um, yeah. I mean that's when we're going when we're going ahead in the middle, when we look ahead in the middle, that's relatively the only way to finish in folk style wrestling. Yeah. Against someone good. Yes, which Jagger Condomini, definitely good. So I, I really like, man, I like both those guys at the at the next level. Jagger is committed? To Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. So Nebraska got yeah. Lenny Pinto and uh, Jagger Condomini. Speaking and of both Nebraska those guys are. That Lehigh Valley. Yeah, that's that Brian, Brian Snyder. Snyder. Yeah, exactly. He's like, come on, guys. Come, come to, to the land of corn. So what, what, while we're talking about the Pinto Rogers match, what were your thoughts overall on that? Other than your one horrible take that his little step over thing was a down block go behind. Other than that, listen, it was a down block. Listen, I've been studying this, Christian. Here, here's the deal. It's really strange. Usually, when you go down block go behind on a high crotch, your your down block leg, right, the one going over there, it crosses behind your ass, right? It goes the other way. Okay, for whatever reason, and I don't know why, it goes to the open side when Pinto does it. You guys can watch it. Bring the film up. Um, we have and, a bunch of clips. It's just Ben can't see them, so it's tough to. Well, you know what? What if I logged on? What if I logged into Vmix and muted it? Um, Tyler, I'd be able to watch along, right? Tyler, what do you think? We're, we're going to Tyler here. Tyler, give us the call, baby. <laughs> All right, we'll keep talking so that you know. Okay, well, yeah, so it, it definitely was a down block go behind. Uh, let's see, I got, got, got my stuff muted. muted. Oh, wait, you I'm can't do that. You guys. Is it still sound good? There you go. There, That's better. Talking. Okay. Um, so, yeah, listen, his his leg goes to the open side. Not, so, okay, let's, so play this in slow motion and pause it. Okay. Can we, okay, here we go. All right. Pause when his leg goes up. And here comes a shot. All right, come on, Brian. Well, let's go. Right there. Oh, oh, you didn't pause it in time. <laughs> rewind, rewind. Can we rewind in slow motion? Okay, so here's what I'm saying. Usually when that right leg goes up, it goes to his left side, right, on a down block go behind. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, he, like, shoots it to the open side. Yeah. So it makes it look really strange, but that's essentially what happens. Okay, let's all we're watching in slow motion, right? Here, see how it goes to the open side? It usually goes to his other side. Yeah. Very strange. I mean, that's essentially exactly down lock go behind, but the leg travels the other direction. And I don't really know why he did it or if it just happened in the moment. But it was down lock go behind Christian. <laughs> there it is. Have you have you ever seen anything like that, Ben? <sighs> I can't say that I have. And if Christian wants to maybe think uh, a better name, then we'll go with it. 
I think we could probably do a better name. Um, but, you know, I, I try not to correct you on wrestling uh, terminology <laughs> or or skills. So um, we well, can co- Did you ask Lenny Pinto what the name is or if he's actually ever done that before in his whole life? Someone had to have asked him. In the I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't hear. listened to his interview yet. Uh, we can go back and listen to that. But, uh, I mean, I think since he's the one that hit in a match, he should be able to name it. Yeah. I can call whatever he wants. Um, but, hey, for that for that match, Christian, okay, so Pinto's in on that first scramble. It looks really good. It was it was outstanding. Last long time. And then for a while there, Rogers is on the attack, right? He attacks two or three times. Leading up to eventually then, he almost gets the takedown, and Pinto gets hurt on it, right? Yes. And I think if Rogers was smart enough, he would have grabbed that other leg, and the ref would have been forced to call it to when when Pinto calls the injury time. Um, and so I felt at that point in the match, like, Rogers had all the momentum. And then all of a sudden, after the injury time, it was like, boom, flip, and wow, I mean – he just turned Pinto just turned it on. He just crushed him after that. Yeah, I mean that was that was an absolute turning point in the match. If Rogers finishes that, who mm-hmm. knows what where where that match goes in the injury time? That's one of the weird things about injury time in wrestling is sometimes it can really. I mean, Pinto legitimately hurt his knee on that. It wasn't some sort of yeah. fortuitous. There was no gamesmanship there, but it was a situation where he was in really bad position, and the takedown was all but imminent. And yeah, if 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 I was calling Chandler, if Ryland finds a way to cover that second leg, the ref is his hand would be forced to call the two, and then injury time, and who knows how the how the match goes. Uh, but you got to credit credit Pinto for the resiliency there to recover and get his head right and find a way to finish the match. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. So I just didn't see it coming when that happened. I thought Pinto was getting tired. Rogers had a, a momentum. And then it flipped completely. Yes. Now I really liked. Um, oh, which match do I want? Do I want to talk about next? Uh, oh, the Chittum Henson match is the match I was most looking forward yeah. to. It had some of the craziest, most physical hand fighting I've seen in a high school match. And the ref really kind of just let it happen, <laughs> let it go. They're just like, you know what? You both are clearly okay with uh, beating the heck out of each other. So who are we to say no? And Man, I I feel like Chittum is just at the is going to be a a star at the next level, right? I just I am so impressed with him from a technical standpoint, and then he brings such an extreme level of physicality uh, for a high school wrestler. That man, I I feel like you know I think about someone like Shane Van Ness who can combine crazy pace with skill. Uh, at the high school level, I think he's going to be fantastic, and I feel similarly about Cody Chittum. Yeah, so one interesting there was they're so physical, but then Henson, I think it was the first take that Henson got on a deep leg attack, and, you know, Chittum just passed the leg, put it up. It, it was, like, picture perfect. Like, if I showed it at wrestling camp, that's kind of what it looks like. And Henson just had no answer, right? And in a lot of these, other matches like Peterson Titus, the scrambling was really back and forth, or Rogers and Pinto. But when Chittum hit that scramble, hit him, Henson kind of just turned down a little bit. Yeah, th- there was a clear scrambling advantage for, for Chittum against Henson. Um, but yeah, go ahead, it, it's did crazy. He score, uh, did he score a scramble in the second period also? He hit the slide by. Um, I don't know if he scored on a scramble or not. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm misremembering. Just the fact that, like CP saying, he could be so physical and just look like a wild man and then, whoop, hit that little uh, sweet little slide by is really awesome too. And then our man JD caught this awesome moment with Chittum, uh right after he won. Yeah, you can go ahead and play that, Tyler. Uh, so it, JD was working on interviews uh, with the winners, and so he was kind of following Chittum, and Chittum just went outside uh, for his cool down. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing uh, he's gonna run across here this is so great they're just like the regular hotel guest just like doing their thing and then there's cars there's people it gets even better when he goes over here to this other side because he starts doing like stance in motion uh the the kid's pace is unreal 
And uh, then you couple that with he's really good on top. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's going to be really good at the next level. And, I mean, he just wrestled oh, he a six-minute match with Wyatt Henson that was just like a brawl. And he's just out here running and yeah. doing I, I'd need around 45 minutes of medical attention if I did that. And here he is doing stance in motion. Hey, where is he on the big board for his class? He's top 10. He did um, really high. I'd have a hard time putting anyone ahead of him as a, from a prospect standpoint. I know he took some losses uh, and he went one. off the top of my head, what about Gabe Arnold? He's really good. So it's Buzakis, Crookham, Mendez, Schumann. Wait, you're wrong year, I think. I, uh, wrong, yeah, wrong my year. bad, my bad. 2022? No, 2023. 2023. Yeah, I was on uh, 2022. He's second. second behind uh, Mark Anthony McGowan. Yeah, give me Chittum. He, he's number one. I mean, because, yeah. You know, Why were the 106 powders not on the cards, Christian? Were you guys able to uh, get them in there? Well, that's like, was one of the weights with no no spring, no Fargo, no, no like, it was yeah, so, so hard. hard to determine who was even, like, in the top five yeah um so it just and i think mccown's gonna go uh, i think we have him at 13 yeah 13 anyways so okay yeah yeah so yeah chitum i think he'd be the the number one guy in that class for me he's gonna be he's gonna be ridiculous and you know henson wrestled well but it's just chitum matches up well with him in the scrambles because henson could get in but Finishing so mm-hmm. such a different challenge for him. Uh, yeah, Mia, it was unfortunate. Uh, Wel- Welker Hattendorf match ended with an injury. It started mm-hmm. off with a really exciting opening exchange uh, with a like an underhook to a to an ankle pick, but then an unfortunate injury for Skylar Hattendorf. But Mia Palumbo Sage Mortimer very exciting match there. A lot of really cool exchanges and maybe one of the, like the best highlights of the entire. Uh, yeah, it was match was was the four for Mia Palumbo. I don't know if we have that clip. Yeah, yes, we like do. You know, Sage was trying to run behind and got a little overzealous, and somehow Mia ends up on the leg here and just skies Palumbo. And the the horsepower involved with a finish like that, it kind of came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, too. Like I didn't usually see it you see like the build up to these kind of Boom. things, and well, that changed. Got, I mean, uh, Mortimer got a little overzealous on that time. I got her hips a little too high, but. To your guys' point, the bottom person, because of the backward momentum, there's usually no way that they can get up. But he was able to, you know, Mia Palumbo was able to power her up and put her down hard, obviously. Yeah, and that was a real turning point. It was, um, it, she was, tra- she was four, down, three, I think. She was down one at that point, yeah. and then you get a four, and then it kind of, uh, I wouldn't say unraveled, but she was able to maintain a, a similar lead for the, the duration of the match. So, very exciting match. Uh, there, um, Patty Gallagher uh, wins over Travis Mastro Giovanni by injury default. Not a lot to say there. Uh, hope Mastro's good to go. And yeah, I think we we hit on hit on most of. Them. What was your what was your favorite match of the whole thing, Ben? Favorite match. Let's see. Let me go through them all. Mm, uh, I mean, man, there were so many. Good, the last three went to overtime, right? So they're really good. You know what? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Vonovich kind of midi. I, I think wow. the comeback in the third period was really impressive. Um, yeah, I really like that match. I'm down to two. I'm gonna have to make a tough decision. It's either Peterson oh. Titus or Mendez Vandeveer. Uh, also a good one. Mendez getting three takedowns in the last period in the third period in overtime. I I think that's it for me. Him him hey. running the gauntlet. That that was just a riveting match. And the end of it, how close Vanderveer was to that reversal. A, which yeah, would, did oh we talk gosh. about that yet? I missed a couple minutes. Bracky and I mentioned it, but why don't you? I would really like Dude. your thoughts. We have. It was uh, so I thought it was like ninety-seven percent that Vanderveer was going to get the reversal at that point. He had him so far off to the side, and and there was like seventeen seconds left or something. And I just thought, holy crap! There's no way. He's gonna stay on top here, and so, <laughs> somehow he did. Yeah, we've got uh, kind of match highlights of that one. Yeah, throw it up. Oh, never mind. No, we don't. J.K. Um, Liar. <laughs> sorry. Oh, maybe next. Yeah, that was um, him. Him hanging on there was 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 ridiculous. I didn't. See so it. impressive. 
I didn't see how you could do that. Just like you can be tough there and strong, but a position just wins out, yeah. right? And if you're in this position, wins out. it's not going to work. And somehow he he defied logic and physics and and squeezed hard and, and hung on that last little bit against a very very game Joel Vanderveer. I don't know if we're gonna yeah or not. Um, um hey, there's... oh there we go. Are we watching this? Yeah, it looks like we're doing this. We're really doing, doing it. it. <laughs> so that has double like that. Man, oh now we got Mendes coming back. But I was say Vanderveer was so tough on top on the first period because it yeah. wasn't like. Mendes didn't want to escape. Vanderbilt's just really, really tough up there. Really good. Beautiful duck there. And okay. He gets the right so out to force. We're going to the reversal situation oh, here. Oh, here we go. Yep, this is it right here. Where, okay, watch this. He kind of bucks him off, and he'll end up way on the side. Oh, boy. God. Okay, right here. Now, right here, stuff freeze right there. See how far on the side he is, Christian? Ah! Yes. Still on the side, but I don't know why he keeps trying to jump over. He should be going the opposite direction because – and then right there, Mendez retains position, and boom. Yeah, that that was a a very gritty ride out there, and a shot from Van de Veer. Yeah, and there was that scramble in the second period too, where uh, Van de Veer had a really good double in the second period, and and you kind of thought that Mendez was dead to rights, and Mendez fights it off. Yeah, so showing the closing, just throws it by there on that underhook, gets rear standing, puts him down. Boom. Oh. Man, very impressive. Hey, can, can I tell you about a match I would really like to see, uh, you know, leaving the night? Yeah. And I don't think they've wrestled before. I couldn't find anywhere. Is is Gallagher and Facundo, I feel like they're both going to be 65s. Ohio State, Penn State, I feel like it's going to be a future rivalry. I, I want to see it. I want to see it, too. And it's apparently happened twice. Patty won. It has? Yes, Patty won the most recent matchup, which is – so it's funny. So yesterday I looked at the pound-for-pound pound rankings, and I was like, yo, this doesn't make sense. I think uh, Facundo should be ahead of Gallagher because he just beat Kyle. Kyle beat Patty at Doc B. Bada-bing, bada-boom. And Bray's like, oh, yeah. Blah, blah. And then he looks it up. He's like, no, after Patty lost to Kyle, he beat Facundo in a duel. So – I don't Wait, know so where St. Ed's wrestled. Who's it? DCC or yeah. Davison? Davison. Davison. Hmm. Okay. So. What score? I don't know, but it happened. That's all I know. So they have wrestled, but yeah, would would I want to watch it again? Well, for the first time, but see it again? Yes. That's the one I think that makes sense. That I would really, um, really, really enjoy would be. Peterson versus Ayala, because Ayala great beating Figueroa, and you guys said that he's not going to go 120. So it only makes sense, you know, Dean Peterson moved himself up to number one by beating Jordan Titus, but then you have Ayala coming up who beat number one at 120, and I think to get a clear 126 number one, that would be an obvious match. Yeah, let's do it. Let's throw it on one of these cards. Make it happen. Okay. Uh Patty Gallagher beat Alex Facundo three to one, and this was oh, January thirteenth, twenty twenty. There it is. Okay, oh. so during who's number one, we made a number of pretty cool announcements, if I do say so myself. And the biggest one being the return of Jordan Burroughs. He will be wrestling Zahid Valencia on November fourteenth. When we dropped the Zahid graphic on Friday, it was, it was funny watching all, all the comments, you know, and people speculating what it was. We're asking, hey, guess who, who's his opponent going to be? And it's very clear no one saw this coming. No one saw a potential matchup of Jordan Burroughs bumping up 20 pounds, more than 20 pounds, to wrestle someone as good as Zahid Valencia. But that's just what's going to happen on November 14th. Uh, you got a little little uh, familiarity with these guys, Ben. What what's your thought on the match? Yeah, I was surprised. We've never we've never seen Jordan Bros bump up like this. No. Nope. Uh, so that was kind of surprising to me that he was willing to because I feel like the Heat is kind of a dangerous opponent. He's one of the few guys who can match Jordan's athleticism. Uh, so I think Jordan's gonna have a battle on his hands to win the match. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's I think it's a really good. Good test for Jordan, and 
will challenge him in a way. I mean, him giving up that much weight. Now, I don't know how, how big he is. I don't think he'd take the weight at 185 if he was walking around at 175. Jordan is a, rare, is but, a big 74. But, okay, hold on, Christian. He, he can't be that big. If, if Jordan is that big, he's going to have a hard time getting back down to 74 kg. Day of, double day of weigh-ins. Double day of, they call it. Yes, uh, I... I'm certain that he is not going to um, get out of striking distance of 74. But at this, at the same time, the the guy needs to wrestle, wants a match. He's going to get a very challenging yeah. match here against uh, Zahid Valencia, who he's got a little storyline himself. It's a it's a return for him. You know, we haven't seen him since he didn't wrestle at Pac-12. So it was January, I think, the suspension or so. Uh, so he's going to come back. Now for the first time, so a couple storylines there, and how's he going to look coming off his suspension? Yeah, um, I would guess Burroughs weighs in between one seventy nine and one eighty one or something like that. Yeah. Um, let's see, and so man, I think that he maybe eventually is uh, seventy nine, and maybe that's why Burroughs feels a little more comfortable with this match. But I was, you know, I was most annoyed, Christian, because Burroughs made me make, like, was it 78 kg or somewhere in there? Like, in the low 70s, I think it was 173. Listen, he he's pretty damn good. Make him make that weight, too. Yeah, he did. He made you... He made you come on down. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he viewed you as as a as a bigger threat, more dangerous. He wanted you a little a little smaller. Didn't want you to have that extra extra squeezing power, Ben. <laughs> I needed it, Christian. I I needed all I could get. Yeah, one eighty five. Who knows how that match turns out for you, Ben? The don't thing be is, a dick, we, Christian. We will we will never know. <laughs> no, we will never know, Ben. Uh, I'm not. So yeah, uh, that's Funny. that's very exciting news. We've got, we also announced the. Well, I guess we should go. We should stay in the Jordan Burroughs lane because then yeah, let's do that. David Taylor gets on Twitter and he says, "Thought you've been looking like a beefcake. Test the waters, and if you want a shot at the real 86 kilogram king, hit me up." So David Taylor wants another shot at Jordan Burroughs, who has been the man the weight below or the Olympic weight below um, since 2011. And David Taylor, and then Burroughs with the with the comeback, man. This is this was a smooth one. From outstanding JB. comeback. Out, outstanding. Um, do we have it? I put it in the doc. Okay. Yeah. There yes. We go. So then right, Jordan says, up. "I made you disappear from seventy four kilograms." So who's really the magic man? Oh my goodness, Jordan. <laughs> Just relax. <laughs> this man has a child. Uh, so that, that was, was a good comeback. That was great. That was so it good. was like it was like the perfect wrestling comeback is like because you know and, and i i like a little trash talk but a little, if it gets a little too far it gets, starts to delve into the mma ugliness i don't really like it i feel like that was like the perfect um i don't know um attitude for i mean for, wrestling for, for your talk. taste buds it was it was the best uh but you're just genuinely it was really good trash talk trash talk doesn't always have to be nasty sometimes it can be uh and sometimes it's nice clean and simple like that and that killed it yes uh, i thought it was i thought it was really good so a potential i mean jordan burroughs versus david taylor match you know to as jordan pointed out he was he had beaten david three times i guess um he beat him at the open actually he beat him twice at the open once was the crazy comeback one then he beat him twice at trials in 14. But then soon at, they never hit in 2015. They didn't hit in 2016, I don't believe. And then no. David then, da up. then David went up. So yeah. who did he beat in 2015? Oh, yeah, Dake, Dake came back at 74 and beat him in yeah. the Challenge Tournament Finals. So Hey, so Christian, David Taylor is the favorite now, right? Man, I have a hard time. He's going to have 20 pounds. That For size? Sure. I mean, they were – listen, Jordan won them all, but they were competitive matches. David yes, is so were. big now. And not only is David bigger, he's better. I mean, he has, he has ascended to, you know – You would think, yeah. The pound-for-pound pound ranks at, at 86. 
So I I don't I don't know what else you can say other than yeah, Jordan Burroughs for the first time maybe in his senior level career is an underdog, right? But he would be a he would be an underdog if that match happens. Um, I, I feel like it. Now Jordan can get mad at us for saying he's an underdog. I think, but uh, I feel like if we had well, gambling, it, that's how it would go. Well, well, I would counter any any uh, feel, feelings like that with well, Jordan. If you were the same weight, I would I would pick you, but you are a sure, smaller person. Not. This is a sport with weight classes. They are they matter and. If you were the same size as David Taylor, I would pick you, Jordan. But I don't think you're the same size as David Taylor, um, based on the fact that you're a 74 and he's an he's an 86. Um, but yeah. if a match happens, he would be able to prove us all wrong, right? And yeah. there is there is that winning element and factor that that Jordan brings that's um, that makes him so special. So yeah, that would yeah, be yeah, and this would be, be fascinating, Christian, because. I mean, a lot of these senior athletes, and you know, a lot of this is in public, but they've been, it's been so hard to get some of these matchups. And a lot of it has to do with weight discrepancies. And so, if, you know, Burroughs were to say, screw it, maybe he'd take the lead. And a lot of other people will say that also and say, I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these guys cross over weight classes in, in practice all the time, like on a, very, like on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. It matters. It doesn't matter that much. Well, I would say I would counteract that by saying, if you have similar skill levels, it's going to really yeah. matter. And if does, say, I mean, like these guys are both world champions. But let me, Zahid's what top ten in the world? Yeah, you're going to say Bros is the favorite in the match. There's no I, doubt. Th- yes, because there's not comparable skill levels. Cause, but that's still a top 10 guy in the world. So do you see what I'm saying about like yeah. how far it has to be close where weight doesn't matter? Well, I, I would just say they have to be of even skill level for the weight, and then it, then it becomes the but, weight. Christian, you see what I'm saying? Like, he's top 10 in the world. What do you guys have him ranked? I'm going to pull out to find this. International rankings. Let's see what you guys have him. Thank you. You guys have the heat at number seven. Mm-hmm. So – you got a guy who's number seven in the world, the weight class above you. If weight really mattered, he'd be the favorite of Burroughs. So weight matters, but it's more of like a secondary component. Yes, I would agree with that. Secondary component. Um, okay. We're agreed. Also, cool news, December 18th, we're doing another eight, man. It will be the second eight, man. We haven't had the first yet. That'll be October 31st, the 195. We're doing this one at 150 pounds. So far, we've got four hammers already locked and loaded, ready to go. James Green, Jordan Oliver, Anthony Ashnault, Pat Lugo, working on finalizing the card. Hopefully, that happens uh, this week. UWW's world's announcement is uh, kind of pausing some of the other. It's being a real entries. party pooper. It's sort of sort of pooping the party, but they're they're trying to figure out what they're going to do for worlds because we got some really elite guys that are like. Yeah, I think I want to do it, but if there's worlds, I will be doing worlds. So, but everyone's kind of like, there's not going to be worlds, and if there is worlds, America's not going. So, so, so are we really not going? DJ, what, DJ T might say, send the troops. He, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think uh, Trump will will make that call. It feels like a more of a rich nothing ender. to be scared of. Nothing to be scared of, Christian. Well, it's not about. I don't think they won't send because they're scared. I don't think. No, that's what, that's, what, that's what Trump said on Twitter yesterday. You didn't see it? No, I, I tried. Oh, to you need to watch it. All it's, of that. it's quite entertaining. Okay. Um. Here we go. Next. So, do you have anything else to say about this, or are you just? Gonna... Yeah, I I do. I you get flustered by the DJ T talk. Well, you're you're just giggling. You're just giggling. Because it's, I mean, listen, sometimes, listen, okay, obviously you guys don't like Trump, but sometimes you, I watch it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, this is comedy. Like, I don't think he's trying to make it comedy, but it's like really funny. Um, <laughs> so at 150 pounds, are we going to do that day before thing to do a wrestle spot? Because I think that would be a lot of fun. I think it would be a lot of fun, but no, we're not doing it. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I think um, 
some of it's like venue related or whatever, but I think okay. I think they want to see how these go first before they start to add in additional layers. But I think if we do one in January, uh, which I think we I think we will we'll, we'll shoot to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if if we attempt that. I think it would be cool. But as I yeah. put out, I put it out on Twitter. Like, is this totally impractical? Like the idea of because a lot of people. Th- the issue is there's going to be so many really good wrestlers that are not in the 158 man, right? Um, yeah. So, what do you, you know, I would love for them all to have the option, but we have to make choices and we have to narrow it down, and it's not that easy. Yeah. So, what what do you do? And but you know, making weight two days in a row, but at the same time, it's it's your opportunity to. To get in the bracket. So I don't know how I feel about it. I know I would love it, but I'm trying to also think of like from an athlete perspective, would would the best of the best really want to do that and, and risk, you know, making no money and losing a match? Yeah. Um, man, I, I think the storyline of Christian, someone winning like seven matches in a row, and I know it's going to be really hard. That would be like the most awesome storyline ever. Right. Yeah, no, it would be it would be really cool. I really do want to do it deep down, but we'll see. Um, okay, maybe in January. Maybe in January. Uh, okay, so that's gonna be good. Thoughts on the early inch? Thoughts on James Green coming down? That's awesome. I mean, we know that seventy four is gigantic for him. We know sixty six or sixty five is just a little too small. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, looking at it. Jordan Oliver, James Green, those two have hit before, I believe, um, if I'm remembering correctly. What What are your thoughts on those two mm-hmm. in this bracket? Well, I think Green, Green's got to be the favorite out of almost anybody that comes up here. I thought J.O. beat him, though. He did not. It okay. was um, 2016 non-Olympic Worlds, best two out of three. Uh, the trials for non-Olympic Worlds, best two out of three. It was 2-1 James Green, 4-3 James Green. Holy cow, I have no recollection of that whatsoever. It was when the Bill Farrell was like the qualifier in 2016 for okay. non-Olympic weight worlds. Wow. Okay. Mind-blowing. So Green won then, uh, so he'd be the favorite here uh, once more. I don't know how I don't remember those matches. But, but they're both one-point matches. In the second one, J.O. was in on a single and had Green up on one foot hopping um, as time ran out. Cool. Uh, excited to watch Anthony Ashnall back in the mix as well at 150, and, and we'll see. We're we're working on some yeah. more really juicy entries for this one, so I think it's going to be. I mean, Ashnall was a guy originally when I saw that I thought he could win, but then when you guys brought James Green in, and I remember the James Green versus Ashnall match uh, beat the streets last year. Ooh, Ashnall's going to have a tough time. That that will be a a really tough matchup for him. But then again. Who knows how the bracket will fall, right? And if someone takes out Green, it could create a path for Ashnall. Green is the favorite, so maybe that's not likely to happen, but still something to consider. Okay. This week. Hey, oh, oh, oh hold on. Sorry, sorry. Pantelio is a guy I'd really like to see in this bracket. Yes. He put yeah. his name on Twitter. Yeah, he's he's in the – it's him – Reese Humphrey really wants in. We've got some international guys that are uh, strong contenders as well. It's going to be a really, really salty group of eight. Jared Frayer apparently wants in. My goodness. Oh, I want him in. I want him in. Yeah, this is the problem. Do you see? We've got – could we see a Bajrang or a Kanchikishvili? I want to see Bajrang in. Yeah, not – wow. Shots fired at Kanchikishvili. He just beat Yanni. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. Um. Here we go. Next up, um, you want to talk senior nationals entries? Yes, I know yes. what I want to talk about. Go ahead. Oh, uh, don't give me the side eye, Christian. I can no, go. I got V mix open. Listen, what Jay Nyermich is busting the Iowa narrative that that freaking the Hawkeyes can't set anyone because of college rules, and the Hawkeye Wrestling Club is pretty much hosting. The flipping U.S. Open, and they ain't sending anybody. Give me a freaking break! This is a joke. Ye- well, I don't think they're saying that. They never said. Um, Who's going? 
Yeah, they well, they never said we're not sending people because of college, right? Or also, I thought well, that's what they said. I thought that was the excuse. Um, because I mean, why don't you? I, I I just can't understand for the life of me, Christian, why you don't want your college guys to get matches. I mean, listen, that's part of getting better. This is in your own hometown. This does not require you spending a lot of money or spending a whole bunch of time. It's effing guys, go weigh in and go wrestle. Get better. I'm wondering. Um. I'm wondering if it's something. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what their reasons reasons are. Obviously, they're doing their own thing November first, and they want to just get themselves ready for that. So they're saying we are getting matches. We're just getting them then, and not. It's only a few. At, at senior nationals. Well, it's it's basically, yeah, not most of their, not their whole college team, but it's a lot of them. Okay, so. The other one that's annoying about you is the 2KG thing. Like, that's really, really dumb by U.S. Wrestling. This is a U.S. Open. I don't know why they're doing that. Well, uh, to get entries, just to get people wrestling. And I, I know for I a know. fact it, it influenced people entering. Really? Yes, for sure. Someone told me that who's yeah, number one know. this week. Like, yeah, we wouldn't have gone if it wasn't plus two. Someone good? Yeah, reasonably. Reasonably. Okay. Uh, I don't like it, but I guess I'll I'll just say okay on that one. Uh, but the brackets are getting much, much deeper, and I like that a lot. Yeah, what really helps is it's only six weights, so it's a lot easier for the brackets to get deep pretty quickly. Kyle Snyder registering out of nowhere. I did not see that coming at all. I wonder what, what I like that. He just if he just wanted to get some matches or whatever, but um, obviously he will be the biggest favorite of anyone anywhere in the building. Anytime. Yes. I think registration closed last <laughs> night, by the way. It does, too. but I think you really? can always like walk up and wrestle or something. Can't you can you do re- late registration? I don't know. Some people Oh, Kyvin Gatson got in this morning. Yeah, he was not he had been in previously, I'm pretty sure. Oh really? So, Mhm, mhm, mhm. So, how about Nick Green up at ninety-seven kg? Yeah, he he uh, continues to grow. Um, but he was he was at ninety-seven last one ninety-seven collegiately, right? He was. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know he got very big. Mason Paris entering is exciting. I think Mason and Dom is a a very likely final there, and one I'd be very excited to see. I'm sure it'll be tough for. Ben to pick against his Tiger brethren, but Mason Paris is is super legit. Look, yeah, uh, that's be an interesting match for sure. David Tate, or I want to see Orndorff versus Gas Tank Gary at Senior Nationals. I want Gas Tank Gary. Wait, Gas Tank the... Gary's going? No, I'm mad. That's why I tweeted. Why isn't Gas Tank Gary going to Senior Nationals? <laughs> I want to see him stake his claim for the heavyweight spot. Oh, Set man. the tone early. That Orndorff, you transferred in, and you're going to be my backup. But now, we don't get to have that. Um, maybe he'll have a late. Someone, I asked why. Someone said, well, I want to read it right. Yeah, Mike Mike said, uh, probably working a double that weekend is why I guess oh they care. <laughs> Isn't it? It's really funny. Um, okay. Um, any other thoughts on some of the entries? Uh, who, who else has entered the fold here? I mean, 65, Ironman was an uh, entry I don't think we yeah. discussed. Yaya Thomas is is. Well, I is brought up Ironman. Well. I brought up Ironman because Ironman made me mad that the other guys didn't yeah. register. I meant last week. I don't think we had discussed mm. his, his involvement. I, who is the favorite at 65 as you look at Is it jo- Joey McKenna? I think it's got to be It's got to be McKenna. He had a really good U.S. Open in December. But that weight class is deep. I mean, you got 15 deep who are going to be really competitive or so. Yeah, I th- I think it's super deep. I think seventy four is crazy. Now Logan Massa, his uh, entry probably makes him the favorite at seventy four. I know there's some really yeah. good guys like Deacon and Hydley and David Carr, uh, but Logan Massa he just he won senior nationals in December. He beat Makai Lewis. He just beat Bexod. Yep. I mean that that's just he's ranked sixth in is that international or world. He's got to be international. Who? Logan. He's ranked sixth in the in the country, so he's 
got to be yes. the the favorite there. All right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wish there was some more entries, but I, I'm at least moderately satisfied and excited with who's in his bracket. Moderate satisfaction from Ben Askren. What more can you ask? Well, you know, there's some guys like Dom Serrano. You know, Nebraska sent a good group. I want to say he does. Um, there's a few other names I was looking through here, but like, I don't know, I wonder how this one. Matt Ramos is an interesting one, a cadet world champ. Uh, you know, but not. Obviously, we're missing a lot of the top, top, top guys. Serrano is one of the guys I'm most excited. It's just because I look at through a lot of things through the college lens. He's a freshman. How's he going to do? I, I, I really excited to watch him. I put him as a must watch here. Um, Labriola entering is is exciting as well. Patty Gallagher as a high schooler. How's he going to do? Um, you know, we believe he'll have the physicality, but this is going to be a really, really deep weight. So, a lot of things to be excited about for senior nationals. We're going to have Flow Zone Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. So tune in for that. You're going to – it's six mats, I believe. So you get a lot of lot of good action there. We see your guy, Parker Kekeisen. You're not going to this, right, Ben? Well, we lost Ben. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll get him back. Uh, I see him. He's sitting down. He's sit, holding up his hands, exasperated. Um, so – why don't we get to get to some questions? What do you say? Let's do it. Okay. The well, one Reese Humphrey wants to know if we're going to let him in the bracket. Um, you know what? What's a weird thing? Some people are like, "Don't let retired people in the in the brackets." I'm like, why not? A, a, a wrestler said that to me. The other, are you there, Ben? I'm back. Yeah, baby. Okay. So uh, the 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 first FRL question was from Reese Humphrey. If, if we're going to let him in the the 150 bracket. But a wrestler said to me over the weekend, he's like, you shouldn't let the retired guys back in. To which I say, no, we, of course we should. And you Why know what? Not? I, uh, just, what was their you, reasoning, Christian? Basically, let the um, current senior level guys get the matches. These guys aren't contending for world team spots, et cetera, et cetera. But I counter that with a, a number of things. Namely, how many of these guys retired not because they don't really want to wrestle anymore, but because in order to wrestle, if you're not the number one guy on the ladder, if you're, not, there's very yeah. few guys that can make a real living just wrestling, right? 100%. I don't think uh, Reese Humphrey still was in very much his prime when he retired. Um, I think it's true for a lot of guys, but it's like it's hard to to make a living just being good at wrestling. And now, dude, twenty five twenty five k to to make the team. That's more than these guys get for winning almost anything some of them. in wrestling, right? You know, you win the some, Open. Some of them, that's like a yearly stipend. Oh, for sure it is. For sure it, it, it I matches. I mean, it's way more than USA Wrestling. USA Wrestling's yearly stipend is ten grand, Christian. Yeah. So, the, you know, you can win the Open and make the team and make far less than you will just winning three matches at the, at the eight-man. So I yes, hundred percent. And if that opportunity existed when these guys were retiring, when Gabe Dean and Keith Gavin were retiring, maybe they wouldn't have retired, right? But when it's basically, well, I probably can't make the world team, so I have to quit. Uh, that's a yeah. that's a that's a different decision. These are, so I think it's one. It adds a really cool element of okay, is this guy still got it? And they're very exciting. And then two, you're you're given an opportunity, and uh, I think it's. I think there's a lot of reasons to, to let them in. So I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, I Christian, at the end of the day, it's this simple. Flo's job isn't to train America's athlete, athletes. That's RTC's job, and that's USA Wrestling's job. Flo's job is to make as exciting content as possible, and by bringing in these retired people, you make that happen. Yes. Uh, I, I agree with that. So that's what we're going these to do. These brackets also have uh... – nothing to do with making world teams or getting on national teams or yeah. anything like that. It has no impact on yeah. that. Uh, so it's not like and this Christian, is taking an opportunity F away from those guys. Yep. If all these guys wanted to get matches, why aren't they showing up to senior national? Yep. That's true too. Very good. Okay. Um, what did Haas weigh in at who's number one? Do you know this, uh, Bracky? I do not. I was, uh, Someone, yeah. Observe Reagan Wright. I would observe. guess he's not 220. I'd guess like 208. 
Actually, I think uh, JD made mention of this. I think he was uh, just a little over 200. Yeah, I thought okay. he said because said I think too. I think JD said there could be a chance he, if he feels like it, goes 195. But I mean, why would he? In Kansas, right? Um, although he did lose it to he to the Lout. Lout, yeah. Who, pre, pre, when's the last time? I mean, I don't know a ton about Kansas wrestling, but. You just figure like the studs will always win states at Kansas, yeah. so it's pretty interesting for uh, those two to hit at the same way. And they probably sought each other out too, which is also really cool. But yeah, I I think you know looking at at Haas, I don't know how much bigger he's gonna get. Is he now he's going to Oklahoma State, the the land of the bulk job? <laughs> so I'm sure he could be made to be a sizable heavyweight, but. He, you know, he looks like a, a full-grown man right now. He doesn't look like immature. Yeah. So, you know, is he going to get three inches taller? Is he going to get thirty pounds bigger? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think he's a ninety-seven guys. Uh, that means you got to make Ferrari, so you can stick around Stillwater a heavy. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think between the two, they'll figure it out. I wonder if AJ wrestles right away, and then Haas comes in. They can do some redshirt juggling. The land of the bulk job, but also the land of we will cut you down. <laughs> the land of the the shrink job. <laughs> yeah. All size changes are on the table. At well, that's what Oklahoma guys. State. I looked at Master Giovanni, and I'm like, John Smith had this dude at 133, and no problem. <laughs> that's not actually all that unrealistic. Master Giovanni weighed 150 with a bucket of chicken in his hands. Now he is really yeah. lean. he's super lean. Like I don't know how you get 17 pounds off that kid, but um. You know, he's he's definitely small. Okay. Next question. Were we always moving towards card-based wrestling events, or did this come from a necessity as a result of COVID? Have other entities reached out for advice on how to run events? From Nick Kroninger. What do you think, Ben? Uh, I don't think that we had this idea. Um, I think it was, you know, do some matches like a UFC type but you guys came up with the tournament thing, and uh, I think it's really exciting. You know, my opinion on long term is that there should be some belts, and uh, I think that will be outstanding, but I think the tournaments will always have a little bit of a place. Yes, I, I agree. There is there is something very special about, about tournaments in the sport of wrestling that is – you don't have that in mixed martial arts. You can't have that in mixed martial arts, right? You can't have yeah. a, tur- a tournament – at least one that happens over the course of a day or two. So I they think did, they did in the past, but yeah, yeah. it's not advisable not anymore. medically. But <laughs> yeah, I, I do think, I do think there's, a, there's a lot that cards have going, going for it. Right. You can, when you can pick the matchups and it in advance, that just gives groups like flow wrestling such an advantage because we're able to contextualize and, and do things like that and get fans more interested. Whereas, you know, I don't know what the finals that are going to be Saturday, right? I could guess, and we can talk about the interesting matchups. But I, I think from an efficiency standpoint and from a marketing standpoint, there's a lot that's really good about, about the card structure. And to this question, I think we wanted to do more um, card type stuff and like stuff like these brackets. Um, I think, COVID might have just uh, forced our hand a little bit and made us do it sooner than we might have. Yeah, that definitely sped it up or accelerated. I think we lost Ben again. Uh, oh, wow. We have <clears> – right, we're not going to get Ben back. We lost him. Um, so we'll have to – Bracky and I finish this. Yeah, I, I think – COVID definitely made us say, hey, let's make stuff happen. What's the easiest thing to make happen? Mm-hmm. Just get a couple matches and see see what happens. And obviously the July 25th event was massive, massive. And you guys loved it. So we're like, yep, we're going to do that again. Oh, how do I think Pico would have matched up against Chimizo had it been him against Chimizo in the 65-kilogram bronze medal match at the Olympics? Kyle Bracky, what do you think about that? I don't know. Um... Man, I think he matches up worse. I don't like it either. Chimizo is like the the slickest. 
one thing for for Pico is his overzealousness mm -hmm. could could cost him in matches, right? He's just so aggressive, and it was what made him great, but it also was too edged for him. And I don't think it, there's a wrestler that's going to make more hay with that than Frank Chimizo. And now you could con contrast that with saying, well, Molinero is as head down and as forward as anyone, but Molinero had just a little more savvy, played the game a little bit more than Aaron did, and that caused him to you know, go on that heater he did in 2016. So I think now Chimizo now is, uh, versus Pico, if he had continued to train, is maybe a different consideration. Because you have to remember, Aaron was – we've watched Aaron wrestle as an 18- and 19-year-old, right? He would have matured as a wrestler and, and increased his savvy, right? And he was making mistakes against the best in the world instead of the best in high school, which is who he should have been competing against mm -hmm. normally had he not been a prodigy. So maybe he makes those adjustments – Maybe, you know, him, if he makes the team in April, being in that USA and getting all that focus, he would have uh, improved slightly. But I can't think Shimizu loses that match in 2016. Although, sign me up for it. Yeah, I'd like to watch it too, but I'm with you. I had Shimizu's match. Yes. And I think uh, they wrestled... Um, they wrestled in a tournament, and that's how Valentin became aware of Frank, because Frank was coming off his suspension and, his, and, and doing the Italy thing. And then I think Chimizo beat Aaron, and then that relationship kind of formed. So interesting how those two are sort of connected. Um, so with all the crossover, this is a cool question, with all the crossover appeal type matchups, should the favorite realize a quick win isn't the intent? For example, Tony grappling match, that lasted 15 seconds, or JB versus Ben, shouldn't the favorite carry the match some? Well, Burroughs did, I mean, it went to the second period, um, so I think he did it somewhat. He did not, the thing is, for Burroughs, so what basically this guy's saying is like, hey, if you're the favorite there, if you're Jordan Burroughs or you're Nicky Ryan, you should let it be a little more interesting. But the moment Jordan lets it be interesting, and the way you let it be interesting in a match with Ben, and maybe tomorrow Ben can come on and talk about this, uh, but is you got to let him in. You got to let some exchanges happen. If you're Jordan Burroughs, the one way you're going to lose is on an exchange where you get out of your depth in some scramble, and the next thing you know, if he locks his hands on a cradle or something crazy in, in a scramble, you get pinned. And then that's the last thing you want. So. I think Burroughs, and I think that's the same thing. Now, with, for Nikki Ryan, listen, I don't know how. There's maybe a scenario where Tony Ramos inflicts some pain and like maybe can hand fight with Nikki Ryan for a little bit, but there's no way he's going to submit him, right? The right. best way Tony Ramos could have let that match go is like 15 minutes, whatever. So for Nikki to submit him in, 15, in 27 seconds is like, yeah, I think Nikki could have played it a little bit there, but then – Maybe he's like, you know what? I'm just going to get the win and move on. I, for me, it's – while these are like crossover matches and meant for like fun and, and, you know, to draw a bunch of people in and watch, Yeah, I don't I don't want it th – that sounds like WWE, yes. like carrying the match. I don't want that. I, yes. I just want to see what happens. And if it's 15 seconds or it goes the whole time, I don't want to see that. I just want to see them compete and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I mean, we – you know, there's – there was a, you know, the the Sug Greco match was not real in the first period. Correct. That that was, you know, I don't like that. I want real matchups, and if that's where Tony Ramos stacks up, I get it. I I think in jujitsu is a little different. He I think he could have messed around because Tony doesn't really pose a submission threat yeah. at all. But that being said, I'm not gonna be like Nikki. You shouldn't you shouldn't do the thing you're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, and similarly for Burroughs versus versus Ben. Um, and, you know, these guys can't – they can't cut that off, right? I mean, how many times – they've competed one way mm -hmm. basically all along to win and to win quickly. It's it's going to be tough for them to, to do that. Um, so maybe the last question, then we'll go. Oh, yeah, people continue to ask what the weight is for J.B. Valencia. I don't know if we're not being forward enough with this, but we said it in the announcement. We said it in the announcement video. Maybe we're not saying enough on social. It's at 185 pounds. Correct. That is the weight class. Mm -hmm. 185 is the weight they're wrestling at. 
Jordan Burrow's going up 23 and a half pounds for this match. Um, City Wrestling Guy, will we get the call-out show of wrestlers in the brackets? Pick your spot style. So, an update here. We did a kind of mock uh, draft. It went pretty well for the eight-man for 195, just with, like, flow guys pretending they were, like, you know, I was Shakur Rashid and you were someone. I don't remember. And we, wasn't we, in we it. picked our spot. Oh, yeah, Bracky wasn't in it. Uh, so it was cool. So we did that. So I think we're going to do it. Ben is going to actually head that up. So uh, we're going to have him reach out to the guys and sort of make that happen. We'll do it over Zoom. And then we'll, ideally we'll play it on FRL. Um, whether it'll be live or not, I don't know. But, yeah, so I think we're going to do that for the 195. So get excited. We're, we're probably going to throw in a little wrinkle there, uh, but I don't want to announce that yet unless it's, it's going to – Unless we're sure we're going to do it. Ben's in the Facebook chat, and he's pumped he's, that we're doing it. He's pumped. And Ben says, yes, no fake competition. Um, yeah. The best part about wrestling is that it's real and um, not fake. So That's why we love it, because it's real to us, damn it. Yes. And it's real in reality, too. It's not mm -hmm. real in the Razor Ramon way. So with that, we're going to get the heck out of here. We'll have plenty, of more, plenty more to discuss tomorrow. Because it'll be Wednesday. A lot of you guys will be headed to Senior National soon. We don't go till Friday because Bracky and I are going to give you the FRL you love on Thursday. And then we're going to go afterwards. Excited for that. Excited to get to Iowa. The land of Casey's. Just Casey's. Heck yes. Breakfast pizza. It's not even a general store anymore. Bracky and I are probably going to get breakfast pizza. Lunch pizza. Who knows. It's going to be very exciting. We'll be back tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great Tuesday. It's free lunch Tuesday here at Flow Sports Boom. HQ. We're going to get some shawarma. It's going to be delicious. Hope you guys have a good day. Good start to your week. Keep it going. Wrestling's back, baby. See you tomorrow.